in progress. Oliver Chet, is it Goblins? It is Goblins against uh, Hironori Tanaka playing Saltai Ram. So this might be what well, some could consider maybe deck A and deck B of the format. Thoughts he's going to get fired off. Multiple copies of Muxus <laughs> in hand. One's going to go away. Okay. Uh, looks like Burchett. Well, let's make sure we got this right. Okay, so we've got Tanaka. Yeah, we got Tanaka on Saltai Ramp and then Autumn on Goblins. Got it. Okay, so it looks like Ringleader is going to be blocking a Drowned Catacombs uh, unsuccessfully. And so now uh, we got a spell. Well, Muxus is really good at spiking. So uh, I see five mountains and a Skirk Prospector's sacrifice. So let's spin, spin the it up. Wheel, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I will say, say you can't. I've like never you, seen Muxus miss like in any meaningful way. Oh, we saw it last round. I I, I would say this is not a miss. You know, I, I would not classify it as that. But that that said, Tanaka's going to have four hasty attackers with Anissa. Um, all of those are lethal, so we got a tender blocks on all of those. Uh, no haste for the Krenko either. We can't generate a massive ball of blockers there just yet. So uh, th this game may actually still be in in uh, Tanaka's favor here. I think so, but it's. Ah, uh, boy, I, I'm going, to, dare I say, dare I say that Tanaka may have to peel this coming turn because with two matron triggers, that means that Burchette is going to be able to dig for two cards, depending on, you know, what they want to find. Don't know, obviously. Um, but if if I'm Tanaka, you know, if I draw a blank uh, this coming turn, I'm not feeling good about things. Muxus is going to yeah. get a block of land. Uh, Krinkle will trade with the land. The, uh, the matrons will, of course, chump block. And then you've got a Goblins player that has five mana, just two to twice, and who knows what comes after that. Yeah, and there are a lot of cards for Tanaka that will just end the game on the spot, but you've yeah. got to come up with those. Okay, so that's Skirt. Prospector. Yep, yeah, that's that's a good place to start. I mean, Skirt Prospector, of course, leads to the most broken turns in combination with Muxus and all the things that you can put on the battlefield afterwards. So Prospector seems like a good place to start. Are we going for a backup Muxus, maybe? I was thinking that. Uh, um, you know, I, I think I don't think that's the worst thing. Well, there yeah, you go, okay. nailed it. Uh, oh, okay. okay, we could. Uh, <laughs> they, they say you can't thought these at top of the deck. Uh, you can't thought these two cards at once either. We saw that uh, <laughs> come, come back to fight tonight, Colossa. But we can thought these. I guess the one Muxus that we know uh, Autumn just just cheated for. All right, so Muxus down. Um, Nissa, fire up that forest. Beat down with everybody. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll see. We'll see what lands are going to die. But uh, and and it makes sense to kill. I think the green sources just because of Nissa's text. So Muxus in front of the forest, Krenko in front of a drawn catacombs, uh, goblin matrons chump blocking a swamp and it looks like a watery grave. All right. So big draw Phyrexian tower. Hmm. I could do something. We, we got a matron in reserve. And the, the nice thing here is even without the Muxus, I don't think autumn is, uh, is dead yet. They can make a lot of blockers and we, we've got maybe three lands coming across from this and next turn Muxus blocks one. And then, you know, the, the Wily Goblin can take one for the team, jump in front of another one. Uh, Goblin <laughs> Matron, once it's uh, you know it's done its job. So uh, I, I think Autumn can suddenly survive the turn as it stands right now and then set up an, another great follow-up turn with the Matron. Or, or maybe this is it. Maybe this is the good turn if we can string this together. Well, I think it starts with Goblin Warchief. So this yes. is interesting because Phyrexian Tower, it looks like it's just going to be tapped for Black Man. Okay, so let's go to the Warchief. Let's go to the Prospector. Let's go to the Matron. Okay, now where do we want to go from here is the question. Remember, this is game number three here. The, the, the fear I have for Tanaka, actually, is that this battlefield is getting gummed up so much by Burchett that I'm not even sure what the best top deck is to clear the path. And we're seeing a, a pretty stocked graveyard, so it, it looks like Tanaka went, has gone through quite a few resources. Doesn't mean there's not any left, as a Muxus is once again added to the hand, daring Tanaka to draw another copy of Thoughtseize, because if they don't, this game probably ends immediately. And Gro that's not what the doctor hey, ordered. We got a redraw. Uh, I love a good redraw. A how's how's that? That? That, how's that? That ain't it. How's that redraw? <laughs> And you know, Emma was vocal about saying that Nissa is one of the best cards against goblins. You, you can kind of see why here, forcing Autumn to have the right combinations of cards just to stay in the game. That that's the effect that one Planeswalker has. But Autumn has managed to string it together here, surviving at a very low life level. But uh, Tanaka not slamming the door shut, and now his Marxus, the Goblin Grandee, once again. Yeah, if we're not if we're not attacking that turn at all, which Tanaka did not, because uh, it's really not all that beneficial to attack in my estimation. Um, but you're in that situation where no no attacks, 
uh, when your opponent's at two, uh, and you're almost certainly not going to have very good blocks in a moment here. So I, I think we're going to see a Muxus placed on the stack momentarily. Uh, I, I believe that Autumn is probably weighing the benefits um, of doing so. And I think I like starting with an attack here as well. So this is a good place to start. Coming in, jump block, which means I get one of these lands out of the way. Cool. And then we can do a little post-combat action of play the Muxus in the grip. Maybe the Wily Goblin as well. Of course, sacrifice the Muxus to the Phyrexian Tower. Or just a Skirt Prospector. And now... What do we got cooking here? Remember, any goblins found on this Muxus will have haste. So we find a Cranko. I think we that's get... the best hit. We get to envy those barns. Yep. Here is Wily Goblin and a Ringleader. Ringleader finds Trash Master Warchief Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, I don't know. If I, uh, last week, you probably don't know this because you have a life to live. Um, last week, I streamed, well mono, I streamed mono green aggro in Historic, and it was truly, truly awful. I, I um, know. I was watching. I uh, Oh, you were I, watching? Okay. I wasn't wow. going outside or anything, so, you know, I, 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 that, that seemed like a good use of my time. And yeah, I, I saw uh, you know, Jordan Cairns, who's playing the Mythic Invitational next week, saying he put so much work in to try and make mono green good, and it felt like it was just quite there, but then it, it's not doing stuff like this. You know, it, it's yeah. not playing Muxus, it's not playing... Burst of Citadel, Corvold, and I, I know you love a scrappy mono green deck, you know, just getting frisky with a pulk lead, but I, I I don't think that's where it's at for this weekend. No, no, I don't think that's even close to where it's at, and the the point I was going to make was eventually, I, I think like the next day or something, I just was like, why am I just not playing goblins like everybody else, because it just seems like it's a totally fine deck, uh, and it's better than totally fine, because it has an I win button at six mana in Muxus, and Muxus does it again, going to take care of Nyssa and all of those lands, Autoprojection to win this match. Two games to one, they move on.